<sighs> Welcome back. Here we go. Doing a bike check on a bike that people have asked me about because it's been in the background a couple of times and it's probably time to get into it and this is going to be a weird one so brace yourselves. This is the bike in question. This is my Tandem. Uh, if you don't know, Tandem is a so-called bicycle built for two. Um, this one is made by a company based out of Watertown, Massachusetts called Seven Cycles. The model here is the Axiom and uh, cheekily they name it the 007. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, this one is a few years old. Um, it is, as you might expect, titanium. Um, uh, Seven is most famous for their work in titanium, although they do build bikes in steel and um, uh, titanium carbon hybrids and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll run through the spec on this thing. Uh, Sevens are all completely custom. They have their own tubing that they deal with. They call it Argo Argen tubing. So this is a double butted seamless titanium. Uh, I think the bottom brackets and dropouts are 6'4" tie uh, the rest of it's 325 um, this particular bike has a campy record nine speed drivetrain on it um, there are weird considerations to be made with drivetrains on tandems um, for for example uh, you've got quite a lot of watts going through one rear chain and so uh, i for one i'm a little bit wary of running um, like 12 speed on the back of them for example uh, maybe it's totally fine, but I'm cautious about that sort of stuff. So this bike is running a uh, nine speed record carbon. It has a wound up carbon fork um, with a caliper brake on it. Uh, it's a campy chorus brake, a king headset, a Easton carbon stem, I think, and then a zip carbon drop bar on the front of the thing. Um, all of which is intended to, to make the front of the bike a little bit more plush. Um, wheels are, front wheel is a Chris King 36 hole, I think, with a velocity um, arrowhead rim. And I'm pretty sure double butted D2 spokes, yeah, 14, 15 comps with uh, brass nipples on them. And I'm running Gravel King 700 by 32s on here and some of you i am sure some of you out there are like you expect me to believe that you can slow down an entire tandem with a road caliper on the front oh my god that's dangerous it's a death trap and like no it's not if you've ridden tandems uh, at all much uh what you find out is um you can use a lot more front brake than you can on a single bike you can't stand them generally speaking up onto the front wheel there's no risk of endo um, and so you can squeeze the front brake lever all the way to the grip and the front wheel will not lock up. It'll just bite in hard. Um, and a caliper brake on the front of a tandem is an extremely effective tool for slowing down. It's a very big effective rotor. The leverage is, uh, is huge on it. Um, and at the time this bike was built, um, there was no way of doing hydraulic discs on drop bars. So you couldn't get ergo shifting uh, and hydraulic discs. Just isn't, It wasn't a thing yet. Now, yeah, maybe. I might build it a little different now. But this is how this thing was set up, and it's been more than adequate. Sure, it limits the front tire size, but this thing really wasn't built to be a gravel grinder. All right, we're going to move back because these things get weird. We got a full-size uh, Blackburn frame pump in here. We got a bunch of stainless water bottle cages on the bike. Um, this is another weird thing about tandems. So... They have tandem specific crank sets. Um, you'll notice this bike, uh, this front crank set has a spider on the wrong side, uh, and yet the pedal threads into it and doesn't unthread itself. So what we got here is a FSA carbon tandem crank set, pro team issue it says, whatever that means. Um, and it's got a timing chain. This is a regular, I think it's an eight speed chain that goes from uh, this crank set to that crank set. So both people are locked into pedaling at the exact same time, exact same rate. There's no interchangeable, uh, uh, you can't, yeah, there's no ability to, there's no ability to, um, excuse me, struggling for words. There's no ability for the captain, the front rider, to pedal while the rear rider doesn't or vice versa. If one's pedaling, the other is pedaling as well. 
Normally I run the cranks uh, perfectly in phase. That is to say this crank position and this crank position are the exact same place in the bike. Um, at this exact moment, I think I'm off by about 10 degrees, which is not a huge deal. I'm okay with that. Um, that's an oversight on my part. I was having a little bit of trouble getting this, uh, this is called um, the timing chain. I was having a little bit of trouble getting the timing train chain tight. Um, it was it was kept coming loose on me. This front bottom bracket shell you'll see here is oversized in here. And, oops, sorry. And uh, this is called a, uh, a Bushnell eccentric bottom bracket. So basically this bottom bracket is, is a regular bottom bracket inside here. And then this guy gets rotated and that puts tension on this chain. So this bottom bracket is offset within the shell. Um, it was just, it was fickle. It needed to be cleaned and lubed and all that sort of stuff. So this is a, a tandem specific uh, crank set because it's got the, it's got the, 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 this front one has the spider on the wrong side. The back crank set, which is in a traditional bottom bracket shell, has a spider with a triple on this side, more on that in a second, and then a spider with the other, come all the way around, with the, uh, with another cr uh, uh, crank on this side. So you get two rear spiders, which is a little bit odd. I'm running 42 tooth timing chains. Totally new school on this would be to run like a Gates carbon timing belt um, between the two, like a belt drive between the two, but I've not been bothered to to upgrade or change that or whatever. It hasn't been worth the time, frankly. Um, get back over to the business side here. Always with the drive side. Uh, you're thinking, perhaps, Wow, you got a triple on this bike. That seems kind of weird. Well, first of all, it's a campy uh, front derailleur, chorus, set up for a triple. 10 speed, oddly enough. Um, and yeah, you need a massive gear range with, with tandems. Uh, they, they historically, they don't climb very well. So uh, you need low end and you need top end because they do descend. So this thing's got a 54, 42, 30 triple. Now, some of that uh, would be, uh, you could you might be able to get it with the double these days if you ran a big enough cassette. More on that in a second. But this guy is running a Chorus Racing Triple Rear Derailleur in Carbon. And it's actually a Shimano, I think it's an XT, but it might be an XTR uh, cassette on the back of the bike. Nine speed. Um, that's a 10 speed <laughs> Chorus derailleur because of course it is and then while we're here uh, it's another 36 spoke um king uh, and that's an iso hub so six bolt on that side and shimano hyperglide body in the back with another velocity and another gravel king and all the rest uh brake is old enough that that is an avid bb7 um bolted on oh, hang on we'll get over there bolted on via so there's an IS mount on the frame, boop, along with a rack mount on the frame, uh, along with a brake bridge. I think that means I can run a um, rim brake on the back if I ever wanted to. Some people run um, a rim brake on the back of their tandems and then a third brake on the back as a drag brake when you overheat your rims. Um, this bike we opted to go only with a disc on the back, but it's compatible with both. Um, so. IS mount in the frame to a post mount, I guess, with a BB7 on the back and a 203 millimeter rotor. Uh, salsa skewers on the thing because duh. Normally the bike, um, the stoker position on this thing has a thud buster seat post that goes in here um, that gives the comfort, a little bit more comfort to the stoker, but right now I'm riding it mostly with smallish children <laughs> that are mine and um, and I need to be able to get the seat lower than that. So I've got a, a it's like a boring, annoying, stupid seat post in there. Uh, likewise with the <laughs> toe clips and straps on the, uh, on the back of the bike. Um, yeah, so if you didn't know, you're thinking, well, you've got a campy shifter and a campy rear derailleur, but that's a Shimano cog stack. How on God's green earth do you have that working? Well, turns out the cog spacing center to center on Campy 9-speed and Shimano 9-speed is uh, like, I think it's like four or five hundredths of an inch off. And there's enough slop in the system 
that uh, a couple hundredths of an inch um, can get lost in the shuffle. So this thing actually indexes like perfectly lovely. It's a little fickle to set up and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it outright as a setup. And again, if I was doing a tandem drivetrain these days, I would be, I don't know, man. I don't, I, I, you know, I've seen people run timing chains on the other side of the bike to use conventional cranks to open up more crank options for them. I've seen a bunch of weird stuff done. I would have to actually crunch some numbers. My suspicion is um, I would be tempted to go with like a 10 speed drivetrain, a wide range cassette, a wider range cassette, you know, something that goes up to, I don't know, 40 or so. Um, and then like maybe a double. Nah, uh, maybe, I don't know. Like I said, I'd have to run numbers. It gets, it gets weird with tandems because I've been up into like the 50, easily into the 50s, into the 60 mile an hour range on bikes like this. Um, and they can be kind of dogs uphill. So you really do want a very, very large gear range and that can be difficult to do and it can be impossible to do with a single chain ring. It can be very difficult to do with a double, especially if you don't want the hops between gears to be massive. You really do want to be able to keep your cadence in check on a bike like this. Um, anyway, this is this is the tandem, man. Oh, a couple other things. Sorry, these are like little things. Uh, it's got a seven seat post on it. Captain, that's me, is currently riding a uh, Physique Aliante saddle, which is perfectly lovely. It's not my normal um, Sella Italia flight, but these work good. Um, this is a Salsa Stoker uh, handlebar uh, with dummy brake hoods with nothing <laughs> in them. Ta-da! Um, because Stoker doesn't need to do anything with that. This is wider uh, than, well, okay, back in the day when this bike was built, and it's not that long ago, but when this bike was built, um, the super wide handlebars had not come into vogue yet. So finding extra wide bars that have to fit around a captain's hips um, was kind of a, a chore, but Salsa made these. I think they're the equivalent of a, of a cow chipper now. Um, and on the front of this bike, I am running, for those who care about these measurements, I am running a 44 millimeter bar, which is about, no, uh, sorry, 44 centimeter. Good God. Um, which is two centimeters wider than my traditional drop bar width on a road bike. Um, I'm moving my road bike up to a 40 four or 46. Uh, this may eventually follow suit. I don't know. I might go a little wider with this, but this is perfectly lovely for now. And it's a really nice handlebar. So I'm sort of not looking forward to replacing it if I decide to go that route. Um, yeah. And uh, in case you're not used to it, um, yeah, shim and then a stoker handlebar, uh, sorry, stoker stem clamps to the captain seat post and then gives you some adjustability here and here, which is nice. There are other ways to do that, but this is, I think, uh, a fairly traditional and 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 reasonable way of doing it, and that's that's the bike. Um, it, it is uh, just as good to ride as you might imagine. Um, uh, captains on titanium tandems are spoiled rotten. The the vertical compliance through the center of the frame with the long wheelbase means that this is an extremely comfortable place to sit, um, ride quality wise, and with a Stoker. Um, shock absorbing seat post on the back of it. it. It's a very comfortable ride. Also, it's got 32s on it now. Um, bike was, I think, originally designed around 28s, but it'll fit. I think I did some calipers in there. I'm pretty sure I could stuff a 35 in there and have it and have it fit. But these seem sufficient for now. Um, it's a it's a delightful, sweet, beautiful ride. Um, I really enjoy taking out people who have never ridden tandems on it before because it allows me to give them a really good first experience on a tandem. Uh, and I think tandems are way cooler than they get credit for. A lot of people view them as sort of like joke bikes, like a bike that you, you know, you roll it out to have a, like, have a laugh about it, but they don't view them as serious bikes that can do real riding, and they, they really can be. Um, skilled teams on these things can really go look at YouTube at tandem racing, and you'll see some either amazing or horrifying things. Um, yeah, so this is the bike for now. This is the tandem for now. I would at some point... Um, maybe like, if we're talking about potential upgrades here, um, they now make a version, Wound Up now makes a version of this fork, sort of, um, that has a disc brake mount down here. And it might be kind of neat to run a front disc brake and a rear disc brake, and that'd be kind of cool. Um, the only reasonable way I can see of doing that is to run 
a Yokozuna caliper, which is basically a, it's a hydraulic quad piston caliper that uses cable pull to actuate it. So like I can run these shifters still, because I'm not anxious to get rid of those. Run cable down here and it pulls a hydraulic cylinder and they actually work really nicely. Um, and that's the only thing I could conceive of doing that. But those are, you know, you're talking a couple hundred bucks for a front caliper, a couple hundred bucks for a rear caliper, a new front wheel. King doesn't make the matching version of this hub in anymore, uh, I don't think. It would be difficult uh, to find and then have to rebuild the wheel. Uh, so you're talking new hub, it's expensive, new wheel, expensive. I have to rebuild it, so that means I have to remember how to build wheels. It's been a while. Uh, a couple hundred bucks for caliper, a couple hundred bucks for caliper, and then, um, yeah, I just, I'm not, oh, and sorry, and like 500 bucks for a new fork, and I'm just not, I think, I think there's no reason for me to do that now. I don't know. Maybe if I put enough miles on the thing, I justify the upgrade because I'll have put that many miles on the thing. But in the meantime, I think I'll leave it be. So anyway, people have been asking for the bike check of the tandem that lurks in the background, and there it is. Uh, these are not common bikes. This in particular is an uncommon bike, uh, but they're super rad. And uh, if you find yourself a good deal on a good tandem, and I don't mean some crappy beach cruiser, uh, and you think you might be into it, they're rad. I can't recommend them enough. So there you go. That's the bike.